you are listening to the Anybody's listening to this. So good day. Good day. Good day. Yeah. Good time. So, uh, we love the session that we asked each other questions so much on the schmooze. Uh, so we decided to ask each other the questions that the other person the prepared. reverse question. <laughs> yeah. And answer them. And uh, this is a nice moment to remind all of you, if you haven't subscribed yet for our channel, hit the subscribe button. Um, so okay. hit it, Toba. I started last time, so you can start. Okay, so I'll start. What is your favorite color? And how does that influence your life? Ooh, okay. Um, red. Oh, red. Red and black. Um, it like, it's like my dynamic passionate outgoing side and then black is like my my pensive introspective side um as a kid i had my wall that was my wall red and black um how does it influence my life um, i think it's just like those aspects of my personality are always um trying to work together with each other um if i see red it's like ah red <laughs> you know like a two-year-old like ah that's the color they learn um but i i love i love passionate colors deep vibrant colors like not pale pink and not pale blue <laughs> but like but like deep passionate colors like teal and burgundy this color is just like oh, oh wow okay my turn and um, how many siblings do you have and what kind of relationship do you have with them Okay, so we're six together. Ooh. I'm the eldest. Me too! <laughs> and um, it's interesting, our relationship, because as kids, we used to fight, like, a whole lot. I was a really lousy older sister for years. <laughs> I used to beat them up. I was... <laughs> Me too! They deserved I, it, though, no? Of course they okay, deserved there, it, but it was like disciplinary beating. <laughs> I had like some of my mom's roles, they were delegated to me. Mm -hmm. So like I had to make sure that people like do their duties in, around the home mm -hmm. because if they wouldn't do it, then I was the one who was supposed to do it. And I didn't want to do it. Um, <laughs> I quit the job after eighth grade. <laughs> Yeah. How do you quit the job? I'll tell you. I'm listening. I want to know. I'm also an old child. I, I left for uh, a dorm in high school. Ah, okay. And I realized that this is not the kind of sister I want to be to my siblings. Mm. And so I had a chance. I came back home only once every two weeks. And so I had a chance to be like a nicer sister Ooh, and, and telling you? stories. And yeah, generally speaking, I was nicer. I mean, once in a while, it, it would, you know, come out of me. And <laughs> we, were, we were still fighting uh, once in a while, but less. Okay. And what really brought us together was uh, during when my, my father was sick. Mm. So we sort of especially also after he died so at first we fought a lot a lot a lot like right after the shiva until the 30 days after it was like a terrible period but after that we sort of like became our, each other's support group and um and we became closer today you guys have this like and we have a beautiful relationship very nice like relationship it, it we love like each it. other very deeply mm. and it's interesting because there are different dynamics right. and at different times like i was very very close to my closest brother we're only a year and three months apart this is yoni yoni okay yeah so we 
after high school, I went for uh, a year to the States and he was there for like about six, seven months before the army. Oh, cool. And we lived together and we we had this very close relationship. Oh, beautiful. And then, uh, and then he left after my father died to the States for five years. <laughs> Uh, when he came back so also we had some kind of a connection but mm -hmm. a little less and then he got married so we, we have like fluctuating okay. you know closeness but we're always close but sometimes we're cl closer oh, and sometimes not and like now he and Bati who live a little bit closer to each other so and they also studied NLP together so they have more of a close mm -hmm. connection and my sister Bati <coughs> and my sister Danielle have a very close connection as well and they go to the states together oh. there's this very nice rich aunt who invites them both but never invites me so, <laughs> <laughs> so i had to deal with that yeah uh, yeah but but all in all you know it doesn't diminish how i feel towards them because they're my sisters and i love them you've got Three sisters? Or two two sisters? sisters and three brothers. We're, we're three and three. My father Beautiful. used to say we're the only thing organized he did in his life. Was having three of each kind. <laughs> you could, my father used to say that if you have a boy in a girl, you're a millionaire. So we had two boys and two girls. So he was like, I'm a millionaire. So you guys are like multi-millionaires. Yeah, definitely. You know? definitely. That, that's amazing. Whose turn is it? Uh, I think it's mine. Okay. Okay, uh, if you could be any animal, which animal would you want to be? I remember writing these questions and I'm like, oh, I hope I don't have to answer these questions. <laughs> um, animal would I want to be? I love, I love the, the gracefulness and the speed of horses. Mm. I, I love it it's just like so they're so graceful and they're so steady also um did you ever ride a horse I did I did I did not necessarily like it <laughs> um but I, I love their 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 gracefulness and their, yeah. their speed and their their weight on solid ground so I love that I would love to be bird because it would be fun to just fly away from your problems every now and again. Um, I think there's a difference in the question between what animal you would want to be and what animal you see yourself as. Okay, so okay, you can so, answer that as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would probably want to be a horse, but I probably see myself as like a turtle. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait, let's throw the question back at you. What animal would you see yourself as? Not which one would you want to be? Hmm. Um, probably an octopus. <laughs> You've got eight kids. Yeah, I got eight kids. I've got all these ideas that I try to to deal with and to dedicate time to and and the household and the wash <laughs> I get that you know I get that but at least you get it done me I'm just like I know I don't necessarily get it done but it's like all these extensions mm. you know and I'm not sure I get everything done. It's just, it's all there and it's all on my mind. It's all part of demanding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I get that. I get that. Wow. Okay. It's your turn. Oh, now. it's my. <laughs> um, okay. Tell me about, um, tell me about Mabsuta. Tell me about, um, your business called Mabsuta and how you became Mabsuta. Okay, so uh, being like a really, really sensitive person and being hurt very easily, um, I, I was like, I think I was conscious that I wanted to lead a good life. Okay. And 
uh, in high school, I sort of realized that it's really necessary for me <laughs> to, to find a way to lead a happy life because otherwise I'll, I'll be really depressed all the time and mm. I didn't want to be there. Right. So I've been searching for my own path for like years. I, you know, I first thought that taking care of other people that will like fulfill my, right. my soul, but it really didn't. Mm. <laughs> and then gradually, um, you know, I, I sort of like stumbled on things. And I also, you know, I also purposely searched and seeked. Okay. Uh, to learn about happiness let's say like I studied psychology and like back then it was more than 30 years ago it was like to find anything to deal with positive psychology mm. it, it was very hard to find but that was what I, what I wrote my essays about because I said it, it doesn't make so any sense to just discuss the illness without trying to figure out how you can live a life that won't lead you to these terrible illnesses. Okay. So, so I was also seeking that, okay. but also when I studied uh, medical clowning, so that really made a very deep change in how I lived because Beautiful. I found myself laughing more and using gibberish and playing games and um that really changed like the whole uh way i was a mother and i felt it's a, it was like an opening to to becoming a more happy person so then i decided i really want to have this in more in my life and how mm. can i be more committed to it how can i do more i love that so I started, oh uh, you know, practicing it, first of all, for myself, for my family, and then teaching other people, you know, you can have a better life. And Beautiful. I love that. Once I encountered NLP, mm -hmm. uh, so then I came back to helping other people, <laughs> but in a very different way than, like, it's a very different approach than a psychoanalytic approach because psychoanalytic approach says we'll dive deep into the problems we'll spend time in the mud and money <laughs> and we money and we'll build confidence <laughs> for several months <laughs> That's conventional therapy. And the, the, the kind of therapy and holistic stuff that I learned was like very, very fast. You, you find the point that started the whole thing. You make a very easy change yeah. and you let the person go through the change. And it's amazing. You know, it's not necessarily that it's, <clears throat> It saves time in the clinic. You don't have to see the whole change. You, you see the beginning of the change. You know they're in the right direction. Okay, that's yeah. wonderful. Beautiful. <laughs> I love that. That is so amazing. You know, when somebody was going the wrong way in a car, all he needs to do is a U-turn, you know? And you're there and you witness the U-turn and you know that now they're going to be in the right direction. And you don't have to follow them the whole way all down to a lot. <laughs> Uh, an interesting association that's where you want to be right now oh of course <laughs> <laughs> okay i think it's your turn my turn okay who do you think you were in previous life and this how, is another one of those questions i didn't want to how answer. does that affect you today <laughs> yeah, it was your idea that we should reverse the question i'm like, reminding you I this know. And I'm like, you know, you can ask other people and it's great because you, you know, you get information and you get to know them on a deeper level, but like, uh, who was I in a past life? I was definitely in the Holocaust. I was probably like a young mother with children because I, that keeps coming back to me. Um, I, I remember like a very strong dream. I woke up and this was like, I was there. Um, how does it influence me today? Well, I told my children, stay close to me. No, they didn't listen. <laughs> um, but I think I also would, like, 
knowing that if this was who I was in the past, um, like sacrificing everything for my children and my family and just being there for my family, um, doing whatever I can for their success, to make them happy, to make them grow, to make them develop as um, good people with, you know, like with their hearts and manners and um, like, like, yeah, that. So I think um, that's where I was. Okay. Your turn. Oh, my turn. Okay, yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I wanted to, I want you to tell me about that moment when you realized that you were Mabsuta. And for those that don't know what Mabsuta means, Mabsuta means content. Ooh, okay. <laughs> really content and okay. happy. <laughs> so that's the name of your business. Um, you told us about like you're searching. Yeah. Tell me about that moment where you realized that this is who I am. This is where I'm going to be. Um, so I think um, a moment that's very, uh, like I remember this moment is when, um, when the three boys were murdered and we didn't know, the whole country was searching for them. And the day they announced they found their bodies, I had to be in Jerusalem and I made a conscious decision that I would be smiling. So I like, I, I call it to wear a smile. <laughs> and I'm walking around in the Shuk area and some guy looks at me furious and he's like, why are you smiling? It's such a day. Um, and I told him, wait a minute, listen, we're alive, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's worth a smile, <laughs> you know? And that really put me, it, I realized how important it is mm -hmm. to smile even when you don't really feel like it. And I'm not saying you should ignore the feelings. I definitely, before I left the house, I was definitely devastated and I, I was with those emotions. But I, after giving them the, the time and space to feel them, I decided to focus on the good. And there is always so much good I around. I love that. I know. love that. That is just beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. Thank you for sharing. That wow. You're right. You're right. Like totally. Um, we don't realize it because the bad it has like I don't know, this this omnis? How do you say? Like it's all encompassing. Mm. It's like it, it there if you look at it, okay, so these are three boys and a heart were connected to them and they you know but it's three boys out of I don't know how many Jews living at the time and doing good stuff and good deeds and helping other people and this all this beautiful stuff happening that we doesn't get to the news <laughs> most of the time no. I, I don't listen to the news for that reason. I just, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Okay, you tell me the BB is the prime minister, fine. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you. My turn. Mm. Who would you be in the future world uh, or in the next life? Mm. I, I'm still planning on being the prime minister of Israel. Oh, wow. Definitely. It's like, it's like, if, like up there I mean I have to know that the prime minister who the prime minister is in order to compete with him right um who I thought for you yes <laughs> <See you. laughs> um who would I be in my next life I'm tired I don't want to come back I'm, 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 I'm just I feel like my soul has been through the ringer so many times I don't want to come back I'm done I am done Somebody asked me, okay, so let's say you can live for 150 years. I said, no, no, I don't want to live for 150 years. No, no, but let's say, I said, no, no, I'm done. 
I'm done. I, 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 I just have this feeling that I'm tired. If I'm healthy, I want to live to like 300, 400. I don't mind. Bang. I have so much to do. I live oh, forever. Yeah, I feel, feel like there's so much creativity in yes. me that, you know, I don't have enough time. <laughs> and I'm like a regular time stop. How does it go? Um, um, God put me on this earth to accomplish a certain amount of things. Yeah. Right now, I'm so far behind, I'll never die. <laughs> it's not me, one. but it's, it's it's totally like that's I feel a like. Great one. But like, I mean, are we asking like, like, am I getting older? Is my body going to get older? Am I going to have the same energy level? Like, like, like living forever or 150 years or three? Like, how does that like? Am I going to have my 40 year old mind and mm-hmm. body? Am I going to have, because like you, you grow as a person with every new experience. Right. So I'm going to live, but then I'm going to get more experiences. I'm going to become a different person. I'm, I'm going to evolve to another person. I'm going to shed to another person. I'm going to become another person. But do I retain my faculties? Do I retain yeah, that's very important. My, my, my ability to move, my ability right. to think, my ability to listen to music, my ability to see the sunrise? Do, like, do I retain these faculties or not? Because like the natural process of life, hold on, we're not finished yet. <laughs> um, so like, that's like an interesting thing. Like, do you stay 40? And I'm not 40, I passed that. But so, theoretically, do you stay 40? And the world just progresses and you just stay in, because that wouldn't be good either to not evolve as the world evolves. Yeah. That wouldn't be good, like, either. So, yeah. Well, definitely, um, if I look at old age, so I think I would like to be old with all my faculties. Yes. And abilities. Yes. But I think like the blo- body slowing down a bit or things like that, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah but like, ready. I wouldn't want to live for 150 years, like in that perpetual, like that, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I want to be 90 years old and learn how to pole dance. That. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I don't have to be like, you know, whatever, but like, I want to be there. I want to be, you know, that 90 year old bitch that gets a speeding ticket and says to the police officers, I'm 90 years old. You're going to give me a speeding ticket, really? Like that with an attitude, you know? <laughs> but I, I'm tired. Yeah. Okay. I'm tired. Like, tired. I have my time You're on this tired. earth and, and, and I, I know, I think I'm done. Okay. Uh, okay. So this one we did. Um, right. Okay. And oh, okay. So tell me about your vision and your dream regarding Mabsuta. Did we talk about that last time? I'm not sure. Okay, but you can share it anyways. If you know. Um. Well, I mean, I I'd like every person on this earth to be a happier person. I mean, what a beautiful uh, thought. Yeah, I'm accepting. So hopefully, through my book that. I got back yesterday from another editing and oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But it's a process. But it's a process. Yeah. And I'm so happy the head start failed because I don't have, you know, deadline pouring it, you know, and everybody expecting when is it gonna come out or anything. I'm just, you know, doing it my Enough. own pace. Right. right okay. And so like via my book, uh, I want to have like these uh like a card game mm. that that like little missions that people can can take daily and like improve their happiness level. And of course uh spreading the word, giving lectures, uh inspiring people to live a happy life oh, i think man. that's what i want from Mofsuka. Oh, man. Um, oh, man. for me as a as an artist to just like do art write books uh paint whatever any kind of any forms of art that would be available for me I just Beautiful. realized this morning that i have to talk to my son and he's uh he's invaded my studio 
Chutzpah. last year. <laughs> Chutzpah. <laughs> so it's very nice having him back home. But I, I realized that I'm like desperate. That I, I need space to create. And, and so we have to come to some kind of an agreement of like a specific day, at least once a week that I know I can enter the studio and create something. I think being creative is one of the essentials of life. Mm, yeah. And you see it with little kids how they they create all the time and they play and they're full of imagination mm -hmm. and you know I'm not going to take out my kids playmobile and play with it <laughs> that's not something I'm likely to do but yeah I am likely to to play with paints and textures and yeah like I yeah doing that. totally we should get together and just have like a a session yeah all right your turn okay those two yeah so now we're off oh if you could listen in oh, on no. any conversation oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what would you listen oh, to gosh. okay so when i was writing these questions i was actually this one i actually thought of the answer to okay um i think it would be fascinating to listen to like that moment scary extremely okay. scary but it would be fascinating to listen to the conversation where hitler decides to do what he's going to do mm -hmm. i think it would just just be fascinating like very scary yeah i would not like i would be, <laughs> but i think it would be fascinating i think it would be fascinating to listen to um like anybody who became great mm -hmm. and that moment where they you know average person or or below average even and that moment where they become great. Um, um, who else? Maybe like, like, is it George Washington or Abraham Lincoln? One of them failed like a gazillion times, like 11 times. He ran, 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 and nobody voted for him. Ran, ran, ran. And then he became the president of the United States of America, maybe. I don't know who it was. Anyway, but it would be fascinating to listen to those people who are average people. And that moment where they became great. Yeah. That moment where they make a decision that impacts and influences the world for generations. Yeah. I think that would just be fascinating just yeah. to listen to. I liked your answer better though. That's the honest <laughs> truth <laughs> to that question. I, 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 I liked yeah. your question better. It's interesting because I just uh, listened to um, a talk about creativity okay. and the guy mentioned that one of the things that makes a person creative mm -hmm. is the willingness to fail that you know failure is part of the deal I and i think that's something i took to to heart and i said from now on i'm gonna be more willing to fail <laughs> um what's his name says that um some rich guy um jt fox have you heard of him no he's like this rich okay. dude he came to tell me one time and he um he, he's very full of himself but i guess if you're rich like that rich you can be yeah um but he said a great line he said you know everybody thinks that billionaires have these great days every single day and he says if i have 57 good days a year i'm a billionaire mm. and I'm, I'm doing the math and i'm like wow so that means that like more than 300 days of the year he's failing and and that was just you know that was just such a like a mind changer for me you know like yeah totally yeah be willing to fail um okay. it's your turn and okay that one we answered right if you if you had no limitations what would you do we answered that one right yeah um, okay, but let's ask that again. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, no, okay, no. okay. Too much, okay, okay. Too um, much. One more question and then wait. Done. Okay, so wait, yeah. wait, wait. This one. This one. Can you say one Can you forget it? Oh, okay. If you could meet anybody in the world, past or present or even future, or imaginary, or from another planet, or um, non human, who would it be and why? And what sort of conversation would you be having? 
Well, there are two, two people I instantly think about. Okay. Uh, one of them is Walt Disney. <laughs> nice. Even though he was anti-Semitic. <laughs> but we'll put that aside. <laughs> you agree to meet me. And, and after meeting you, he won't be a <laughs> Probably. <laughs> love it. Yeah, I would love to learn from him, you know, how to make your dreams come true. And also, I would like to meet um, some kind of a woman who makes, fulfills her life, you know, like, like, like Oprah. Rabbaniti Mima, maybe. Okay. Oh, wow. I think of Oprah, you think of <laughs> No, because Oprah has no kids. That's okay. no, not, no big challenge, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> Tell Oprah that. Oprah, we don't think your life is challenged. <laughs> no, no, I say, like, I'd like to see somebody who's sort of like me, has okay. a lot of children and still manages to... Mm. Uh, influence a huge um, scale right. around totally the world and still like maintain a life mm -hmm. and be a mom I don't think she cooks at all she probably doesn't clean either uh, probably but... and she probably can you imagine you Mima Mizrahi checking for lights <laughs> That I can, that I can. She writes a lot about it and she talks about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I would like, like to okay. meet with her and just discuss it and uh, how, you know, she's also one of her people I would like to interview because she lost a son right. and she lives a happy life and it idea. really inspires. Mm -hmm. That's a really good idea. Okay. What's your fear? Oh my God. What do you regret? Oh God. <sighs> Those are two questions. I no, think. no. That's one? No, no. Okay, fine. Oh, I don't sorry. know. Um, you made this question. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my biggest fear, I think, is getting to the end of my life and not realizing everything that I could have done. And, and, and like sometimes the fear is so big and so strong that it it just paralyzes you yeah. and then days go by and months go by and years go by and you're like instead of just like jumping into right. the water right and so I'm scared that I'll get to the end of my life and you know you get this review on your on your phone what your yeah. life was and I'll just be like what I could have been I think that's my biggest fear yeah um my biggest regret I have a lot. <laughs> this could take a while. But my, uh, if I sum it up, I think it's not acting impulsively and not um, and not thinking long term, not thinking of the long term consequences in so many things in my life, and and it's affected, you know, me. It's affected our relationship, my relationship with my husband, my kids, my friends. Um, so I would take things that I said in the past. I would take it back mm -hmm. and and just you know think about the other person and think long-term effects instead of just you know sprouting up my mouth. That's very that's very deep. Yeah. I I can uh, relate to that. <laughs> I think wait, do you have another question? No. So we're done. I think we're done. I think we're done. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is just like <sighs> I'm gonna get on the scale. If I would get on the scale, I, I'm gonna be like 10 pounds lighter. <laughs> Shed, yeah. like, we just like shed like all this okay so we have a question for you guys first of all i want to tell i want to say a tip um after what you said mm -hmm. and i think um there was on a tv show that i saw <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's called dead to me i recommend it highly it's, okay it's a little black but dead to me dead oh dead Ooh, yeah okay. But so there's a, there's a scene there where uh, there's a, ra a girl rabbi and it's a, like a memorial for this old guy, a Jewish guy who died. And the non-Jewish character goes up to her and she talks to her about like, am I going to hell and stuff like that? And the rabbi says, 
there's no in Judaism. We don't speak about hell or um, yeah. That was also new to me. What hell or heaven? Heaven. Uh, a person's deeds, whatever you do in this life, that's what's going to give your <laughs> hell or heaven. I think you know trouble. when you come to, like <laughs> to the end of your life, uh, you're going to see all the things that like you didn't do, and that's going to be the feeling of hell and stuff like that. So that's what was the answer there. And I really think that practicing being really soft and nice to yourself. Ooh. Okay. can make hell much nicer for yourself <laughs> i mean you whatever you didn't do there's nothing you, you know at a certain stage you can't do anything about it but if you practice being nice to yourself and accepting all the stuff that you just didn't do and all your mistakes and all the right. shit that you gave yourself and other people <laughs> so i think you'll eventually be in heaven even with all the unaccomplished stuff, mm -hmm. even with uh, yeah. all the stuff that you could have, could have done otherwise, wow. which is, wow. I think, a lie. If you could have done otherwise, we would do otherwise. <laughs> I like that. Okay, that's good. Um, okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to say... Oh, we, I forgot the question. We have a question. Okay. For our audience, do you prefer us talking about TV series or about our own lives? We really desperately need an answer for that because we've been like doing like three sessions about talking about uh, ourselves and asking questions. And last week we talked about weddings and we're really intrigued. Do you miss us talking about TV shows <laughs> or do you want us to continue in this like format? Um, in other words, do you want us to go back to being TV zombies and, and, and you know, just binge watching? We were binge uh, yeah. watching for your benefit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I just gave the total homework for next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen it yet, watch Drop Dead Diva. It's awesome. Okay, I think that's it. We are yeah, done. we're done with the show. So like us, uh, write us comments, ask us questions, and we will be back next week on the show. show.